Now let's have a look at aerial perspective and how colours change as they go from the distance to the near. I'm going to show you a classic mistake with painting skies to start with and then we're going to employ a little bit of lateral thinking. Does this ring any bells? Here we are doing a nice sky. Now every time you lift the brush you get a blob. Every time you do that you get a blob and the paint trickles down. Here it goes. That is not really very effective. Um, in other words, what we're doing really with this is we're starting painting where if we're not careful, we're going to get these vertical dribbles running down the sky. So let's have a look at a way of changing that. That's no good, obviously. So we'll throw that one away and I'm going to show you an easier way. Here is our simple landscape sky horizon, distance, and some, some foreground. Starting with the sky then, let's go back to the basics. Let's turn it through 90 degrees. And we'll start with the sky. Any dribbles now will run down and off the image. And if they're horizontal, it will still look like skies. Painting over the distance horizon and making the sky a little darker at the top. If I get a blob now, there it goes. I mean, that could be a cloud rather than having it absolutely horizontal and running the, the, uh, the dribbles the wrong way. That would suffice really as, as a, a simple sky. What I'm going to do now is turn the, uh, the painting back the other way. We're going to look at a, a distance and I'm going to add just a little bit of uh, a magenta into the, uh, into the colour. I'm still not going to turn it round yet because I've got the distant hill to put in. This is going to be a, a slightly, the, the, the colour slightly darker blue going in on top. Distance is always bluish. And the more blue uh, you get in the mix, the further away things look. So let's just run some darkish blues in here. That will look like a distant hill. Um, and we'll bring greens into this gradually. So it's a, a, a traditional classic landscape. Imagine there are all fields here, fields in the distance. I'm not worried about painting the individual fields in because this method means that you can get the temperature of the colour right before you worry about any of the detail. That's dry enough now to turn around this way. We've got a distant hill. Distant hill looks fine to me. We're going to add a cold yellow. Lemon is the cold yellow, and thalo blue is the cold blue, and we're going to put a little bit of burnt sienna out on there in a minute. But initially, I'm just adding a merest hint of a cold greenish blue into that, and bringing it down. Streaks and so on in the landscape don't matter really because the streaks could be fields. We can do anything with the streaks that we want to. Gradually, I'm making this into a cold green. Coming down, and as I said, little streaks, doesn't matter. They're going to be fields. Little gaps, we'll put in other fields later. There are no hedges. There is no need to do any pre-drawing for this at all. I'm going to add a little warm yellow into the mix. Now this is cadmium yellow deep and mixed with my blue will give me a mid, a mid green. So we'll just add that in, a little bit more blue in there, make it slightly darker as well. And again, a few more little streaks. There's our little house, we'll just paint around that. That'll be put in in more detail shortly. My greens now are getting warmer. The greens are getting warmer and they're going to be more defined. As we get nearer to the viewer, we're adding, we're making the green now a little of ultramarine in there as well. Ultramarine, cadmium yellow, and no cold colours now at all. So the greens are getting warmer. We'll leave the little gap here for the, the road. Should come up around the corner and 
Later on over the top of this green, I'm going to add when it's dry some burnt sienna as a little wash. Now, what we can see is we've got blue in the distance. Let's just take this through. We've got blue, distant hill. The sky is slightly darker at the top of the sky than it is down at the, the bottom. Blue hill, bluey green, cold green, mid green, and this will become a warm green. And so warm yellow in, in here. So we've got a kind of a muddy green coming in. And we need now just to wait for this to dry because I'm going to put a couple of washes over this and we'll put in all of our fields and all of our hedgerows and make it into a little landscape. It's been about three minutes now for this to dry and I've got a, a medium a size eight round brush and we're going to put in just with the tip of this brush in blue, I'm using a ultramarine blue, very dilute, the hints of fields. Now if I've got strokes and, and streaks on this, they become fields and I've used a very dilute blue initially. Way there in the distance you can see the hints of fields and I'm using a slightly thicker and slightly less dilute blue as we get nearer to the to the foreground. Every time you lift the brush you get a blob, they become trees. So we'll just put in and fill in a few fields. Blue as it dries will go greenish because of the colour underneath. So these distant fields will stay in the distance. There we go. We want to define the house. So I'm adding a little bit of yellow now, a little bit of cadmium yellow deep. We'll paint the house with some trees around it. And very simple. There's our house coming in. I've added some green now to my color for my hedgerow. Any streaks, we paint hedges around them. There we go little road coming in. And you can see we've got a look of distance simply because I've got the temperature of the colours right. Simple little little uh, demonstration of this, but colour temperature is, is a very important thing. I'm going to put some burnt sienna over our foreground greens and warm those up. So we'll have blue in the background, mid bluey green in the far middle ground, green in the middle ground and warm brownish green in the foreground. And a little bit of brown on the road, a little bit of detail in our cottage, put some windows in and any trees that need working up, a little hint of darks on there. And that is aerial perspective. Very simple to get distance like that.